how to make the most out of SelfCut's stitch and scoop tool. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the stitch and scoop tool and show you some interesting use cases and some helpful tips and tricks. To get started I first want to show you some basic concept of a stitch and scoop. I'm going to hide this object I have here away. I'm going to select here a very basic uh, cube and a cylinder punching through it. So what I want to show here is the concept of what happens when you remove something that goes through all the way of the volume versus it goes through partially. So if I'm going to remove this uh, cylindrical part, you'll see over here it makes a hole all the way through. This cuts through the object through and through. Now what will happen if I if it doesn't go through, if I make it, I move it just one side out, something like this, and in this case it will basically just make a hole and it will fill the hole, meaning is this will basically be a wall over here that is, um, if I finalize it, you see I'll be able to kind of select this part and this is separately, it's not cutting through, through and through. The same would be what will happen if I add some uh, thickness to it. So for example, if I leave it, let's say even um, kind of like this, but if I add thickness to it, so let's say if I'm going to delete this face and I'm going to add thickness to this wall, um, whatever thickness is, let's say something like this. And now if I'll cut out this shape and I'll select both shapes, um, it will cut through all the way because this is a proper volume. So it can cut through the volume. So this is basically the main idea that I want to show over here that if you have a thickness, it will cut through. Okay, and then there is obviously the other uh, options in Stitch and Scoop, which I hope I'll show with this example. Okay, so with this example, what we're going to do here is I have a basic vase here, and I'm going to style it. Um, to do that, I'm going to make a drawing. Now, I'm just going to use it a different way to show you a tip. Uh, so you can actually go to precision settings and start making sure you draw a straight line. And if you do a big drawing, that's definitely recommended. But for now, I'm going to use just a simple drawing like this. And I can obviously use a rectangle and again position to make it what it is. But I'm going to use here a cheap way of um, making something more precise out of a random kind of a simple drawing that is not straight. So I'm going to use a flatten tool to flatten it something like this. And uh, yeah, that saved me. I didn't have to focus on snapping to something or keeping um, minimum um, angle, all these stuff that keeps me straight. I just do it like this. And now I'm going to add thickness to it to show you that the add thickness could be used uh, for a mesh or for profile. So I'm adding thickness something like this. And now you can see I have the same add thickness tool has been reused now for a profile. And now I'm going to center this around the object. So all I have to do here is click the center. And this is now centered to the object completely over here. What I want to do now here is make a few revolutions that is kind of rotate it around the center and that I can use for the object. For that, I'm going to go to the copy offset tool has an option in it pivot. The pivot tool is a common feature available on many CAD software. And I can choose here maybe four copies. I don't need that many for it. So, and I'm going to merge them together. So let's take a look before I merge them. I'm going to isolate them. You can see over here that we have a lot of kind of intersecting stuff over here. They're all individual. If I go to the combine feature, and I use the merge option. There's an option cut intersections. And if I do this, these are all now cut. So meaning is if I go to manually select these spaces over here, you can see I can start selecting them, they are cut. So technically I can just go the way you go in other CAD software. Normally you would cut this and then start picking away. But SelfCut actually has an easier way to do it. Also, you go to geometry clean and remove inner edges. If I do remove inner edges, you can see it removed everything and it left it like this. Now, it depends what I want to do. If I would want to work with this, I would want this to be a closed circle. So I would go to 3D sketch and basically go to a circle and snap from the center to here. And now I have this as a circle. And, and this will help me if I want to do things like that. For example, if I want to, um, let's say, extrude this. And later I want to go to polygon mode and select um, parts. So I can separately select this part because it was a separate polygon and now I can start extruding that. So I can start playing with this type of stuff. Um, in my case here, actually, I don't really need the center point. So I can remove it, something like this, because it will work without it and I don't need to play with the difference. So I'm going to extrude this um, 
to let's say 300 okay so kind of make it really big and now i have this and i'll bring back my vase so the vase is completely hidden with inside in this um, <coughs> in order to make this work what i want to do i just have to change the color from one of them so let's say i'll change the color of the um, vase over here and before i do anything i'm actually going to make a copy of both of these so i'm making a copy of both of these and i'm going to hide them away so i have a hidden copy and now i have these two selected okay so now if you go to stitch and scoop you basically have the option to union them which is not relevant over here we'll just combine them you have the option to remove something so if you want to remove let's say the vase it will basically leave out this cuts onto this and if that's what you want that's that's okay or if you can remove the other part which is basically going to leave you with this and holes over here and i'm actually going to use this in one example um, and the other example is the other idea i'm going to use two options so the other option is that use intersection which will leave me only with this part only with the outside part so i'm actually going to use both that's why i made a copy in one i'll use this option so i'll get only this and Let's hide this away for now and I'll bring back the copy that I made and now I'm going to use the other option where I'm going to remove um, these and leave the cut or something like this. Okay, now if I match them both together, if I bring them both, they're basically combined. That's it. They are combined together and so on. Okay, so I actually should have colored the other because now I'm left with the same color. I wanted to show the different colors. Um, so, but nevertheless, I can color them now. I'll change the color of this object, let's say, to something else. Okay, and now you can see we have something like this that it's basically just a different color. Okay, but why is this helpful? So, first of all, if I want to combine this, this is already just a nice way of painting it. Um, I can do other things, for example, I can twist them. And make them look much nicer kind of something like this and there's a lot of other things i can do it but what i want to show in this video here is that actually combining them is not so easy if i'm going to do a union now combine them you'll have a problem it's going to show you non-manifold most likely it will try to process it and then will give you usually it will give you an option actually it did work um, but actually here removed something it's not perfect the reason here is if you understand the way union works or any of these stitch and scoop options, which is also known as Boolean operations, um, they must have intersecting volumes. Uh, meaning is one object must invade the space of a second object. It must go into another object. And the fact that I use the same object to cut on both faces, meaning is that this second ob this object actually does not go into this object at all because this is 100% um, the same slice as the other. So it's, it's just kind of the empty space that was empty over here if i hide this away the empty space that you have over here is being filled by by this object by the other object so there's no intersection at all so this is where colors come into place because i'll show you how i'm going to do it what i'm going to do now here is i just need to scale it so they go in slightly so i'm going to go to the scale option and i'm going to make first of all keep proportion so if i scale it they will um, scale everything even now I see this has a 137.85. I just need to scale it by a fraction. So I'm going to make it 138, 138. And now this is slightly bigger. And if it's only slightly bigger, now I should be able to combine it. Okay. And correctly because they intersected. And now you can see this is perfectly fine. But how do I get back the size? So this is where it comes in the material selection where I can select this material over here and I can go back to the scale and I set it again to key proportion and I make it 137.85 137.85 uh, and here you go so this is basically reset so now what you have here is you have an object that is nicely merged together they're different colors and you can use them anyways I can select only this color for whatever reason I want to play with it or just even just changing color so whatever you want to do uh, but this is basically is split off by selecting colors and I can do now let's say twist them make them look nice and yeah voila so this is basically what the boolean operation can do and it's quite a powerful tool together with the material selection even more so and it could be used for styling could be used for anything else and obviously for building objects as well um, that's basically it 
Uh, let me know if this was helpful, and if you want me to teach anything else. Until next time, bye!